harmonize with me and hold me tight all through the night. You're shining bright, I'm your oyster, baby, you're my pearl. Hello, I'm Dominic Monaghan. And I'm Billy Boyd. We are here in Los Angeles for the first time, not in Los Angeles, but for the first time doing this podcast. It's very exciting, Dom. Have you been invited onto a podcast before? I have. I always ignore it. You just, it's not your thing. I don't like getting out of bed. But that, but for this, you thought, well, I will get out of bed for this because this is mine. And also it's Dom Monaghan, oh, who's yeah. one of my favourite people in the whole world, including dogs. Oh, that's sweet. So we decided a while ago to do a podcast, which by the way, welcome. You guys are listening to it right now. It's called The Friendship Onion. Welcome to The Friendship Onion. And we should probably talk a little bit about why The Friendship Onion, but also why podcasts right yeah since to be honest bills everyone's doing a podcast right now it doesn't matter to me dom so what makes this rise above all the mess dom monaghan really yeah oh thanks mate because i tell you what it is dom as you know since we were together on not like that no on lord of the rings when we met on that pretty much since we have been talking about doing things together. And we've done a couple of things. We've done a cartoon, you know, a, we've done, you know, little bits, voiceovers. This. But we've always been looking for the best thing that we can sort of enjoy our friendship and do something entertaining and fun. Right. And make it natural since we do spend genuinely quite a lot of time together because yeah. we've now been living in the same city for what, a decade? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, obviously, we lived in Britain together, but then Billy moved over to the States. We spend a huge amount of time with each other. I've been into podcasts for a long time, and you started to get interested, what, like a couple of years ago? Yeah, it was really you, Dom. You said, Thank you, you know, well, you should listen to podcasts, and I didn't really get it at first. But now, even on the drive over here, I was listening to podcasts. I really enjoy them. What was the moment for you when I introduced you to the idea of podcasts and maybe exploring it, where the penny dropped and you went, oh, hang on a second, I get it. I get what this is about. I don't know if there was a moment, but I just thought it's it's a genuine sort of medium, isn't it? It's, you know, if we were listening to a Beatles album this week and you said to me, you know what? I would love to talk about this. It's such an interesting thing. I would like to be able to discuss this. There's no other more honest medium to do that, I think, yeah. than podcast. Yeah, the platform is so free. Obviously, back in the day, we had radio, but there's only a finite amount of time for you to listen mm -hmm. to radio and listen to radio hosts. This now seems to be, you guys can listen to a podcast whenever you want, however you want, for however long you want. You can go back into archives. You can listen to it once and think, okay, I'm going to move on to something that sounds like it. There is a huge amount of artistic freedom in there so with that in mind what's this one going to be about because we can go anywhere exactly i mean obviously we met on lord of the rings so i'm pretty sure that's going to pop up quite a lot i mean i think it'll probably pop up in this episode we've already mentioned yeah. it once yeah just then yeah and i think at some point we'll probably do deeper dives into lord of the rings because that is probably the number one thing that people ask me about when I'm out and about. Is it the same for you? Yeah, I would think so. Unless somebody asked me, you know, what it was like to work on Lost. Oh, don't even get me started on how was Russell Crowe to work with or someone coming over to me and going, fool of a tuck. And I go, no, no, that's the Scottish one. And then they go, well, whereabouts in Scotland are you from? And I go, no, no, that's Billy. And like we have said strange, before, isn't it? we've signed things... For the other person, because the, the person asking for the autograph will not take no for an answer. Yeah, someone will bring over a picture of you. <clears throat> and I look at it and I think, well, that that's not me. But they probably don't care. So I just signed Dom Monaghan. And I don't necessarily, this is interesting, because I don't necessarily think that it's because we look like each other. No. Because same-ish height, mm -hmm. same, same, you know, elements of the way that we look. But... Yeah. Different eye colour, different nose shape, different yeah. jawline, different yeah. style. Yeah. I think it's more along the lines of Mary and Pippin are very seldom seen off camera. Yeah. 
and people just are not quite sure which one's which. Which one's Merry and Pippin. Exactly. In, in fact, on the set, as I'm sure you remember, there were people that worked with us throughout the entire production, which was like almost two years, where they would call us Billy Dom or Dom Billy because exactly. they didn't know the difference. Sometimes I get confused. So as I, I often find myself being a little envious of the journey, the individual journey that Elijah went on or Sean Astin went on as hobbits because you can't confuse Frodo and Sam. Do you know what I mean? Do you think anyone ever confuses Orlando Bloom with John Rhys Davis? I don't think so. Nah, probably not. No. So we will talk about Lord of the Rings, yeah. obviously. Yeah. We're also going to talk about our life as actors because we're still having our job to do. And then that's another thing to think about. What if you get a job that takes you to Italy for three months? How do we do this? I've thought about this, Dom. I say we still do it. We'll take the mic. Whoever has to go somewhere takes the microphone with them. We, we, you know, we'll we'll clear this with cast media. You yeah, know, we're not we just going to steal. These. We're not going to. We don't steal microphones. No. But we'll take them with us, and then we'll still do the podcast. And say I am in Italy, then you can ask me about Italy and say, "Have you had a pizza yet?" And I'll say, "Yeah, I had a delicious one last night, Bella Bella." Right, because at some point we were going to talk about like a specific food from a specific country or a specific drink, and we could do that authentically. If See, this is the thing. Authentic. I love it, Dom. And this is what it's about. We're just going to have anecdotes. We'll talk about movies. We'll talk about music. It's just conversation between a couple of old friends. I love it. In fact, just before we started talking about this, we, yeah. we had mentioned that at some point in the show, maybe we'll talk about a specific moment in Lord of the Rings, yeah. the, the movies. And mm -hmm. I said... It will, it will act in some way as a thirst trap. And you said, oh, what's a thirst trap? And I said, wait, 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 let's talk about it on the show. So do you genuinely not know what a thirst trap is? I honestly don't know what a thirst trap is. It's like a social media term. Carry on. Used by youths younger than us. Mm -hmm. In which someone might post something up that is asking for a reaction, usually in a slightly flirtatious way. So maybe like... A guy has been working really hard in the gym and he wants to show people on Instagram. So for the first time in a long time, maybe he'll take his shirt off and say, yeah. what do you think of this? Or someone's showing off a new pair of shoes or a new car that they've bought. It's, it's a little bit like clickbait, but with a leaning towards something a bit flirty. That's nice, that. I've so, learnt, see what I've done there, Dom? I've learnt something today in this podcast. That's, that's kind of why we're here. A you know thirst I mean? trap. Do you think we should move on? Because as well as us talking about stuff, we want to have other people involved. Oh, that's right. As you know. It's interactive, isn't it's it? It's interactive. There's going to be questions, voicemail. There might even be quizzes. So if you've got like a burning question about Lord of the Rings or about Billy or about me or about anything associated with that, you can call in. We'll give you all this information at the start of the show. No, maybe the end of the show. Start of the show would be stupid. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that information yet. But we already have people that have called in. Well, can we listen to that or can we read it? What? How does it work? We're, we're just finding out, you know. We're looking through the window to the engineers and producers of cast media who are now pressing buttons. That's the great thing about episode one is it's very meta. You're seeing us in real time. Mess it up, basically. Hey, Billy and Dom. Uh, this is Pete. I got to know, how many times did you read the books in preparation for the shoot? And which book was your favorite? Thanks so much. That's a good question from Pete. Do you want to answer that one first? Just to clarify, when he says books, mm -hmm. does he just mean general books? Or is he, does he mean the Lord of the Rings? He is specifically talking about the Lord of the Rings. Okay. <clears throat> It's a great question, Pete. <coughs> I, I'd read Lord of the Rings when I was about 15 or 16. There was a very tattered copy in my mum and dad's house, and my dad had told me for years, just wait to read that. Wait, you're not quite ready yet. At 12, 13, I was asking him, he was like, oh, it's like a thousand pages. You might want to wait. You might want to wait. I'd already read The Hobbit, listened to the BBC Ian Holm recordings of The Hobbit radio play. Wonderful. Fantastic. And then when I got to 
15, 16, maybe 16, I think. Mm. He had said, now you're ready. But the cover had slightly come off and the back pages had slightly come off. So I was always nervous that you're going to get to the end of the book. Yeah. And maybe the last three or four pages weren't there, you know? Yeah, yeah. What about you? When did you... Well, here's the thing. You saying that the, the cover's coming off, I could have helped you with that, Dom. Because as you know, before I was an actor, I was a book binder. Mm. I made books. Mm. And one of the books that I made was Lord of the Rings. Mm. And I used to read every book that I used to make in the factory, except Lord of the Rings. Too big. It just felt like too much of a commitment. I never got round to reading it. When I left work, I, 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 I gave up on printing and I, I uh, went to drama school. But I had three months off and I went to Florida for some reason. Mm. Just I, you? Me and girlfriend at the time. Mm. And we hung around the Florida Keys and I took Lord of the Rings with me. And this is an absolute true story. First day there, went down to the pool with Lord of the Rings and I dropped it in the pool. Mm. And it became the size of like a small boat. <laughs> as it absorbed the water. <laughs> and I, I couldn't read it even then. So I didn't actually read it until I got the part of Pippin. Right. And then at that point, I was living in Glasgow and working in Edinburgh. And I had an hour on the train every day, back and forward to the theatre, where I was uh, in a play. And I read it on the train back and forward. Mm. It's wonderful. And I read it thinking about Pippin. So oh, brilliant. So in my head, it's a story about Pippin and some other people, wizards and all that, but mainly Pippin. I mean, that's probably as it should be as an actor, right? Mm. You approach it as, you know, what is my character doing? But mm -hmm. how great to have read it in terms of, I'm going to play this character. Did yeah. you know at that point you were going to play? Yeah, yeah. Wow, that's brilliant. Isn't it good? I mean, what an extraordinary book. I, I, I've had so many great experiences reading books over the years. And I wouldn't say that Lord of the Rings is my favourite book in the yep. world, although it's in my top five, but absolutely the top of the list in terms of the most immersed I've felt in a world. Yeah. I couldn't believe how much this, you know, genius level writer, Tolkien, yeah. was able to paint a world in my mind that felt like I was in it and walking around in it. and Yeah, and you look forward to going back to the oh. book to get back into that world, right? Oh. I mean, my mum, who obviously you spent a lot of time with when they came over to New Zealand and subsequently, I joked with my mum and dad before they came out to New Zealand. My dad had read the book probably, I don't know, more than five times. Mm -hmm. And I said to my parents, to my mum, if you're going to come over, mum, you have to read Lord of the Rings. Come on, you're going to meet Gollum. You're going to meet Gandalf and Pippin and Frodo. You need to know who these people are. And she said, oh, wizards and magic and monsters. And I said, don't worry about that. Don't worry. It's not that. It's it's characters. Yeah. It's it's people you love, you know. So she said, well, I'll, I'll give it a go. And she absolutely loved it. And it, like since, my mum has never read any books about wizards and magic yeah, and yeah. elves and anything like that since. And I said, well, mum, honestly, you don't need to. They broke the mold with that book, didn't yeah. they, really? Okay. Well, so who's the next one? Yeah, let's get another question. Hey, Billy and Dom, this is Taylor. I was just wondering, why do you think you two formed such a strong friendship? And what is it that you like about each other? And what annoys you about each other? <laughs> that's, that's a good question, actually, from Taylor there. We have to be careful. We don't fall Very, out. very careful. This is only the first podcast. I'm not sure, really. I think it's... I think there's sometimes a little bit of hard to explain kind of chemistry magic about a friendship that I'm not fully able to work out. Like, yeah, we've spent a lot of time with each other. Yeah, too much, some would say. Too much, some people would say. But certainly principal photography and, and reshoots later. Spent a lot of time with each other. I mean, I remember being quite aghast at the... That the fact of the matter being that we would shoot in the day, yeah, get picked up at maybe five, five thirty, mm -hmm. wrap at six, six thirty, sometimes seven, and then a lot of us say, right, where are we going for dinner? Instead mm -hmm. of even if you like each other, yeah. kind of saying, right, guys, brilliant, see you tomorrow, but I need to go home and be on my own. We we did we did gravitate around each other, and I don't think it was 
forced, right? It no. Just... Yeah. And I think, do you think there's anything, I'm just thinking about it just now. Do you think there's anything in that we grew up in big British cities? Like you're a Manchester guy, mm. I'm a Glasgow guy. We sort of understood each other's music as we grew up. You know, we we go to a pub and have a pint and play a game at pool. We understood that sort of shared history, even though it was totally different. Yeah. But it was different from the people who grew up in LA or had yeah. a New Zealand upbringing. That we understood that sort of... Yeah. We had a sort of shared thing there. I don't know. Maybe that's part of it. I think that's certainly part of it, that Elijah was too young to be going out and drinking in bars when yeah. he came to New Zealand. Sean Astin had a young daughter. He didn't really seem to be in a place in his life where he was going to be doing that as much. Orlando obviously hung out with us a lot. But like you said, I I was 23 when I did Lord of the Rings. So I had spent at least five years pretty routinely in that pub-based banter, let's play pool, have some fun with each other. I certainly didn't go out of my way to think, it's important for me to be friends with Pippin. Mm. I knew that it was, but I didn't think, right, well, I should probably go for dinner with him and uh, we should probably maybe just play pool together one night just to get to know each other. It was Nothing was no. forced, was it? I don't know if you remember, but I think on the first day of filming, you gave me a little card. I and, don't remember this at all. And it said, uh, I'll watch your back if you watch mine. No, did yeah. I really? Yeah. That is new information. There you go. Wait, hang on. Are you sure it was me? Um, <laughs> yep. Wait, so had I written I'll watch your back? Oh, that was part of the card. No, you'd written it. Handwritten. Wow. Yeah. That's a shame you don't still have it. That's completely... Maybe I do. Wow. Well, you know, I think that's that's a crazy thing. It's amazing what you forget, isn't it? Um, Merry and Pippin are obviously great mates. And sometimes in the script, just going through a day... Yeah of me needing to protect you or, mm. or you needing to make sure that I'm okay. I think that that kind of facade creates something real as well, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's ongoing. I don't know, as, as Brits, I think we also probably both don't explore the whys behind the friendship as much. You just do it, don't you? Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah you don't get too deep into it. I, I like spending time with you. So I just spend time with you. And we make each other laugh. Which... Uh, yeah, some of my, f you know, most fun times is just you coming down to the house and talking about stuff. And that's, I suppose that's why we're doing this. And what annoys me about you? Absolutely nothing, Tom. <coughs> oh man, I had such a long list then. But Did now you? it feels like I can't do anything. Um, what annoys me about, yeah, I can't think of anything off the top of my head. Um... Maybe, may, maybe you, you had that. You, you well, I've got one, right. but it's not. This is this is more a gripe about me. Carry than on. You. <laughs> maybe sometimes, if I'm irked by something, yeah. or 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 annoyed by a person, or, or 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 whatever, something's got on my nerves. Sometimes, if I tell you the story, yeah, you adopt quite rightly a devil's advocate type thing mm. and sometimes i needed to be like yeah that was terrible and you're right and sometimes i should just listen well no you do listen but, but you always yeah. you adopt the very sensible thing of philosophical of like well you know dom sometimes you know these people they might have had a bad day and mm. you can't be sure about motives and i always think Damn, he's a better person than me. No, no, you're right there, Dom. Really? I'm going, yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to be more team Dom. Also, here's a, here's just a, uh, a gripe from a physical point of view. I think you can drink more alcohol than me, yeah, and probably not show that you're as tipsy as me. So sometimes, if we're having a glass of wine together and it's turned into opening another bottle of wine, I think, oh, I'm, I'm a little. I'm a little heart, two sheets to the wind. I wonder how Billy's doing. And I look over at you and I think, he's absolutely fine. Yeah. I don't, I don't drink he's it. He's going to have a good night's sleep, <laughs> take his dog for an early morning walk, <laughs> and I'm going to wake up and be like, oh God, I feel terrible. <laughs> Do you have a hangover cure now in your old age? 
No, I think I think hangovers get worse. So, like Absolutely. you know, drinking gets less as you get older, doesn't it? Because it's not as much fun. Yeah, that's a good point. Hi, Billy and Dom. My name is Alex. I'm so excited for this podcast. Um, what would you say some of your favorite movies were growing up that maybe inspired you guys to become actors? Thanks. Alex, the, good questions, actually. That's a good question, For Alex. the first week, I think this is good questions. And also, as actors, most actors tend to be obsessed with movies at some point. In yeah. Their life, right? What about you? All right, here's my quick, as quick as I can answer to that. There, there is a thing in Britain, or there used to be, called Butlins. Mm. Butlins was a holiday camp where your parents would, you know, pay whatever it was, and you went there, and then everything was free. So there'd be, a, you know, a fun park where you, you go on the roller coaster, and it was free, you didn't pay every time. There was a theatre, a cinema, that was free. But not really free. Not really, because your mum and dad have paid, but, but you don't pay every time you go. Right. When I was there, there was a couple of movies. There was Return of Pink Panther, or the Pink Panther Strikes Again, actually. How old are you at this point? Not sure. Okay. Ish. 10, 12. Okay. And also there was... The Seven Voyages of Sinbad. Oh, right. With those crazy special effects. Mm -hmm. Harry Housen. Mm -hmm. Right. And I remember I would go there every day to watch those movies. Mm. At some point during the day, I would go in and watch those movies. So those were huge for me. Now, as a grown-up, can you mm -hmm. repeatedly watch movies or are you kind of one and done? One and done. Right. There's only a few movies I'll re-watch. With Neil and I, right. Spinal Tap. Brilliant. Gregory's Girl. Oh, brilliant. There. Done. That, those, those three. You just smashed it out of the park. Um, movies that were influential for me growing up. Uh, I mean, I don't want to be boring and say Star Wars, but I feel like I'm going to just because as a kid, it was, it, it was the kind of bridge between I like films and this is a really fun experience for me to be sitting in front of the TV watching them. And that could be something I could do. Because mm -hmm. I remember asking my dad, how come Han Solo was also Harrison, uh, was also Indiana Jones? Because I was confused. Ah, right. I was yeah. just confused, you know. And my dad said, oh, he's an actor. So he, he is Harrison Ford in this film. And then he's Indiana Jones in this film. He puts on a different outfit and and reads different lines and i remember thinking oh okay so it's a job and you can do it for a career and that was a big light bulb ah, moment for me so cool. probably star wars i wonder how many people around the world would have said that in some way those first three star wars movies changed the course of their life because that's another kind of seismic moment in in movie history isn't it yeah huge but i think of a certain age when you're a certain age a lot of movies can hit you quite hard and stay with you forever you know yeah brilliant okay great question alex bills yeah you had mentioned one time to me which i think is a, a, a brilliant comment that one of your favorite things about being an actor is the fact that you travel to all these different places around the world and experts in different fields come in and teach you what they've known by them learning everything that it is to know about sword fighting or horse riding or yeah. what it means to be a golfer or what it means to yeah. be a chef. I love that. And I think that's one of my favorite things about being an actor as well. The other thing for me that I love about being an actor is this built-in travel element that forces you to embrace other countries' cultures. Travel is very important, very it, important. It's very good for the mind. And I know you and I have, over the years, been quite adventurous with our eating of yeah. different foods. You and I took a trip to Thailand in which we basically said to the chefs there, what's great, bring us that. With that in mind... <laughs> It, but not in Thai. We just said it in English, didn't we? <laughs> I'm just remembering the time oh. that we we actually took a canoe across to an island in Thailand because someone said there's an amazing restaurant with an amazing chef, but you have to you have to get yourself over there. 
all of those facts were true. So we canoed over, took about 30 minutes to get to this... Roasting hot sun, right? Roasting Do you remember? hot. It was, it was a solid, if you're talking American, 100 degrees and in Celsius, 35 plus degrees on the top of your head. Excruciatingly hot. We got there. They mainly spoke Thai, but we said... Which we loved. We said, we'll take this. And it turns out it was sort of raw shrimps done in like super hot chilies. And if you remember, the chef came out and said, no, yeah. you guys don't want this. Yeah, he said, are you aware of what you've ordered? Because this is raw shrimp that in some way cook in the heat of the chili oil yeah. and the garlic yeah. and the spices. And we said, give us 10 of them. Bring them over, we said. We'll have two orders of that. And we ate it. And I was sweating, dog. They were great, though, right? They were delicious, but it was difficult. It was a difficult eat. Top. And then we finished. We had a drink. And we said, we've got to canoe ourselves back now. Mm. And if you remember, the sun was going down. The fish were flying out of the water. Do you remember that? Yeah. What was that? Is that flying fish or flying something? Flying fish, because I remember saying to you, flying fish, and you went, where? where? <laughs> <laughs> but flying fish, and then I don't know if you remember, Dom, but I had a tremendous diarrhea panic. Yeah. Which is not common for you. I don't know another time in our lives where no. you've said, I really need the bathroom. I really need to go because I've got a very strong stomach. I can, anything. And and we were on, I knew that it was 30 minutes back. And I thought, am I, because we were quite close by this time, mm. but n not close enough that I could perch myself over a canoe yeah. and let myself go. I, that's what I thought was going to happen. I thought you were going to say, Dom, look away, look away. Don't paddle anymore. Don't look back. I'm going to I'm going to feed the flying fish and then you would just hear those gentle plops into the ocean. But thankfully you kept I, I managed I think the strength in your gut more because of the flying fish than you. I was just I was scared of the flying fish. Yeah. You know what they might do well, if they suddenly this bite my butt. Yeah, yeah. So I managed to hold myself and I but that, it's always stayed with we me. We got though. to the shoreline, and as soon as your feet could touch the bottom, you said, that's it, I'm off. I and, ran. And, and I had to haul... You had to deal with this, it all. ...this canoe up to the guy who'd rented us. And then by the time I got to the hotel room, you were absolutely delighted with what had happened, and you were just lying <laughs> on your bed underneath the air conditioner going, oh, I'm so relieved. I'm so relieved. So... Which brings us quite nicely... That was a roundabout way of saying we like food from around the world. And what better way to start than with what has basically become a kind of cliched USA staple snack food, which is, I reach for it delicately, the Twinkie. A Twinkie, Dom. Now, I'd like to call this piece of the show Dom and Billy Eat the World. Oh, Love that's that. great. So if you guys out there have maybe uh, something from the country that you come from, which is a local delicacy or a treat or a, or a piece of food that you're proud about that we might be able to get hold of here in the United States, make some suggestions because we love being introduced to new food. What, is, what do you know thus far about a Twinkie? Now, here's the thing, Tom. I have never in my life eaten a Twinkie. I've never eaten a Twinkie. In my mind, and this might not be true, somehow I feel as if I read somewhere it was invented for space travel. For space travel? Like for astronauts to eat in space. Right. Why would I think that would be true? I'm wondering if maybe you've confused it with the idea that it doesn't seem to degrade at all on planet Earth. So it might be right. able to survive in a spaceship. But my understanding okay. of, of space food is mm -hmm. that it all has to be dehydrated and then hydrated back in space. If you bring something that has any level of moisture through the atmosphere, I think it completely sucks it all out of it. That's my understanding. Well, I think we're, we're both got very good facts for people there. And neither of those facts, I think, would be true. Well, I'll tell you what I know about the Twinkie. Snack food, very often found in 7-Elevens in the United States. 
a favourite of Woody Harrelson's character in Zombieland. He was on the search for Twinkies all the time. I've never eaten one. They're always available in a 7-Eleven. The thing that unnerves me even before opening it is they always have this kind of slightly oily, greasy kind of vibes to them where they stick to the cellophane that they're okay. wrapped in. Have you seen that? I have seen that. They're known for being... Well, let's be let's be as politically correct as we can about this. They're known for being not that good for you. Really? Yeah. Well, I'd, and for, you said that they last for virtually ever. Mine has a sell-by date of June the 6th, 2021. Oh, okay. So then the, you, you probably couldn't take them in space. I well, will say this. I'm not tasting it yet, but the right. smell is quite nice. It smells like a, a sponge cake. I went to smell my Twinkie there and I accidentally <laughs> <laughs> smelt the make. <laughs> Which is kind of Twinkie shaped. I was trying to work out what the what the shape of a Twinkie was earlier on. Do you know anything about, like, is this a rhomboid, potentially? Uh, well, it's difficult to see, isn't it? It has, um, if anyone who's never seen a Twinkie. Oh, sticky. Sticky. Yeah, that's quite... Sticky alert. I think you keep it on the cardboard, right? Well, yeah. I, for me, it, this isn't a great way to describe it, but it looks like a 3D clock with the the sixth hour cut off does that make sense like if you're looking at a clock absolutely not really i think if you're looking at a clock's face so i'm looking at both the twinkies here or or, or oh, just one, one of them right? like this one individual twinkie if you imagine it like a clock's face yeah like moving backwards away from you it's getting quite surreal now the the sixth hour has been bitten off Hey, you no, no. We, it's like Salvador Dali. The way okay. you're, what are you talking about? Right. A clock face. Well, let's just eat it then. All right, hold on. Shall we do it together? I don't, I don't like the fact that it's left quite a heavy amount of the Twinkie on the cardboard. Yeah, and it's left quite a lot on my thumb as well. Now, I think you have to get quite deep into it because I don't just want to get the sponge. I want to get the inside as well. Ready? Ready? I don't think you'll like it. I don't from know three, I from yeah. three to. One Twinkie! Moist. Yeah, it's like um, creamy. It's like a sponge. It's quite spongy. It's, it's not bad. I mean, as a, as a Brit, as an mm -hmm. Englishman, mm -hmm. I would like this with a cup of tea. I think it needs yeah. something to cut into it a little. Oh yeah, bit. so a, a nice, a nice strong cup of tetley or something. Mm -hmm. Marks out of ten. Um, I, you know what? I'm going to say it's better than I expected. Same. Would you mind if I had a second bite? No, I think you should. I feel as though I don't have much cream in my Twinkie. Get deeper in. That seems to be where the where the cream filling is. Right. Hold on. I wonder if this is the type of thing that in a couple of hours, makes another appearance. Do you know what I mean? Like, you kind of go, oh, Twinkie. Oh, that's, a, that's like a clock face without the six. Do you think? You might say. Because your son's quite a tastemaker. Do you think your son would like something like this? I don't think my son's ever had a Twinkie either, but um, I tell you what, Dom, mm. that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to finish mine, which is all credit to the Twinkie. I thought I was going to have one bite and say, that's far too sickly. Yeah. But I actually quite like it. And oh. I think you're right. A nice cup of tea. Nice not cup of not tea too, much too much milk. Not too much milk in it. No, no sugar in that one. But just a nice strong cup of tea just to take that that sweet edge off. The edge off. Here's a cool piece of trivia for Go you. on then. It's a very popular confectionery treat in Mexico where they're called submarinos. That, is that seems to make sense with the shape, right? The, no, a submarino, that makes sense much more than a clock face with the six being bitten off. <laughs> I'll be, I won't be able to sleep tonight trying to work out what you were talking about. I have to admit, I was kind of reaching for something there. But just to conclude, mm -hmm. because we'd love to hear from you guys. Mm -hmm. If you have something that you maybe grew up on or something that you found on your travels, which is hard for you to uh, get in, in your local area or yep. something that you think Billy and I will be in some way delighted to try out, send it to us. Or, or tell us where we can find it. Give us all the information about it. We would love to eat the world. I'm going to give a Twinkie a 7 out of 10. Much better than I thought it was going to be. And I could see myself ordering a Twinkie with a nice cup of tea. I'm going to give a Twinkie a 
5.9 out of 10. I didn't know we could do points. Oh, sorry. Carry on. 5.9 out of 10. Better than I expected, but... There's two Twinkies in a box, and I can't get through the second one. That's because they're made to share. Lovely. Twinkies made to share. Billy. Yes. I've always wanted to be a quiz master. You know, like one of those old-fashioned guys who, like, ask questions on the TV. You would be brilliant. And now yeah. we get a chance to live out that dream because now we're going to have a little quiz moment this is a good thing about the podcast we can do whatever we want Wh- dom whatever we want and i think as the weeks go on yeah maybe we turn this into a quiz where in some way you might win some sort of prize oh. but at this point i don't think we can offer anything apart from just a congratulatory nod in their direction oh i think we'll need to offer more than that surely Sh- should we introduce our two guests and yes. see what they might want to steal from the studio behind us so what's up guys so we have Joey. Hey, Joey, how's it going? Hi, Joey. How you doing? Pleasure to meet y'all. Pleasure to meet you too. And your fellow contestant is Tyler. Hey, guys. Hello, Tyler. Hey, you're totally welcome. Now, before we begin this quiz, which we have in front of us, which seems to be very Lord of the Ringsy based, what's you guys' Lord of the Rings knowledge at this point, would you say? uh, Joey, how about you go first? Uh, I say uh, with the movies, I very well versed, especially mm-hmm. in all the extended editions. I've watched them, you know, I grew up on Lord of the Rings, so oh. I say with the movies, I'm very well well versed. The books, not so much. Okay, that okay. sounds like a good start. Yes. Tyler? I've seen the, uh, the movies once or twice um, a year, um, and the books I've read a couple times as well. Oh, oh, now so well. Tyler was, was quite cool there. He went, I've seen the movies once or twice a year. Right. Not just once <laughs> or twice, once or twice a year. And he also knows the books, which, you know, sways things a little Tyler's way, maybe. So so we're going to ask you guys questions, but the only other thing that I'll tell you guys is if either one of you get stuck, you get one opportunity to ask one of us for a clue, but only one opportunity. So make sure you spend that golden ticket wisely. Got it. Gotcha. Bills, do you want to go first? First question, which is, to, is this to one of them or to both? I feel like it's to... Well, it must be to one of them because they don't have a buzzer. It, n- neither of you guys have a bell or a buzzer, do you? No. No. I don't have a buzzer it's... in front of me. No. <laughs> first question then to Joey. Joey, what is a hobbit's favourite food? Is it A, mushrooms, B, lembas bread, C, ale, or D, blueberries? Oh, I would say it was food, correct? That was, that food, was question. yes. Food, I would say mushrooms. Correct! Joey gets one! That's a good start, It's a Joey. fantastic start, actually. Off to the races. I feel like it was kind of an easy... Well, we've me. got to start a little easy. It's a good on. point. All right, Tyler, you good? You ready? I'm ready. In the movie, The Lord of the Rings, who said, we've had one, yes, but what about second breakfast? Was it Mary, Pippin, Frodo, or Sam? I believe that was... Um... He's struggling. Oh, Mary. It's- is, is that your final answer, Mary? Final. The answer's Pippin. We've had <sighs> one, yes. But what about second breakfast? The Scottish oh. accent <laughs> should have given it away. <laughs> now, well, second breakfast is actually in the book, isn't it? I don't know, actually. I think they do talk about second breakfast and elevenses and afternoon tea. I think they I've, talk about it in the I've book. I've always wanted to check that because I can't remember because that day, if you remember, was quite hectic. Yeah. And I can't remember how that line came up, but I can't remember if it's in the book. I'm pretty positive it's in the book, but there we go. All right. Joey, it's one nothing. You're in the lead, good man. Now, tell me, what is the name of the volcano where the ring is thrown into? Is it Mount Doom, or Skiliath, Minas Tirath, or Baradur? That's Mount Doom, or Skiliath, Minas Tirath, or Baradur? It's uh, Mount Doom. Fantastic! That's two for Joey! No, it's not right. Nope, that's wrong. It's Baradur. <laughs> hey, what? 
It's called Baradur. Yeah, yeah. It's that Mount Doom? Both. No, That's Mount crazy. Doom is the mountain where the volcano is oh. situated. Situated. Ma- Mount Doom is the is the massive mountain that they're climbing, but Baradur oh. is the Baradur. place. That to, is this, is, uh, that wasn't an easy. That's a tough one. That yeah, wasn't an easy one. question. And they're getting harder, Joey. Yeah. They're getting harder. Still one nil okay. to Joey. Tyler, okay. you can All catch right. up here. You can tie this here. All tie. right. What is the name of the most popular pub in the Shire? In the Shire, is it Ooh. the Prancing Pony? The Green Dragon, the Black Board, or the Burgundy Lion? It's the Green Dragon. That's a correct answer. That is the correct answer. One, one, one. It. one, one. Nice Joy. work. Nice work it up. Joy, it's another multiple choice. And it is, yeah. what does Aragorn see right before charging into the battle in Mordor? Does he say, for Frodo... Not with that accent, but does he? <laughs> does he say, freedom? Does he say, hope conquers all? Or does he say, Middle Earth will not fall today? He says, uh, for Frodo, but not in your <laughs> awesome Scottish accent. He does, Joey! He's done You're it. up again, he's 2-1. Again, is that in the book or is that just in the film? Does Does Aragorn actually say for Frodo in the book? I'm not sure he does, you know. I don't know, Tyler's read the book. I don't know. He doesn't know either. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll find it. If you guys know, tell us next week so that we can report back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, yeah, Tyler. So you what? So it's two one, is it, to Joey? Is that two right? one to Joey, and this is quite a difficult one, I think, Tyler. Yeah, I'm not sure about Uh-oh. this one. Okay, uh, Tyler. Here we go. Which of the following areas in Middle Earth has Legolas not been to? Is it Helm's Deep, Rivendell, the Shire? Or Isengard, which which area in Middle Earth has Legolas not been to? I'm gonna have to go with the Shire. Is the correct answer? Oh, that was a difficult one as well. Because he'd it? be he'd be kicked out of the Shire for being too well uh, groomed. Oh, he's very beautiful. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. The hobbits like people to be a little rough around the edges. Maybe your hair's grown out. Maybe you smell of carrots. Yeah, you smell a poo a little bit. Food in your beard. Legolas wouldn't have any of that stuff. No, nothing. No. It's 2-2. Two, two. It's 2-2, two, two, Joey. And here's quite a difficult one. Okay. What causes Merry and Pippin to grow taller when they are in Fangorn Forest? Is it the White Wizard Sorcery? Treebeard's magic spell, the ant water, or the ant food? It's the uh, the ant water causes them to grow tall. That's very, very That's good. He's good, isn't he? And they become the two tallest hobbits in That's history. Right. The two tallest That's hobbits right. that ever lived. And some of my favorite improvisational stuff that Pete allowed you and I to do in the movie was, do you remember, there was a, there was a point where you and I were in the same frame together, but we, we weren't on the same eye line. We weren't able to see each yeah. other. And Pete said, what if the two of you, without the other one looking, are trying to measure how tall we are? Do you remember that moment? I do, I do. I think that was, was that near Saruman's Tower? I think before so. Before the fall of Saruman's Tower? Yeah. And we're both like this. And Isengard. Right, working out. That was funny. Brilliant. All right, Tyler, you're What's, up. What's the score? Is it two? Is it three two to Joey? Yes, it is. I think three two to Joey. Right. Three two. To Very Joey. fair of you there, Tyler. Well Very done. Very close. Very close. Very close. All right. Question eight. We're coming towards the end here. Uh, Tyler, other than Sting, Frodo's sword. What was the other gift that Bilbo gave Frodo to use for protection on his journey? Was it a crossbow? Was it a mithril vest? Was it lambas bread? Or was it, of course, that medicinal pipe weed? <laughs> well, probably some pipe weed, but mm. it's the uh, mithril vest. <laughs> it's the correct answer. It's 3-3. Three, three. This is a Clash of the Titans, episode one. So I am going to give this question to Joy. Joy, who said, oh, it's quite simple. If you are a friend, you speak the password and the doors will open. Was that Mary, Pippin, 
Bilbo or Gandalf? That would be uh, Gandalf. He's absolutely right, Dom. That's correct answer. That no. What what does that make the score? I think is that four three to Joey. Yep. Four three. So that means this is for a draw. This is for, for a draw. Or you need maybe to get this, Tyler. We might be able to find a time break. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, a time breaker question if we need one. Okay, Tyler, concentrate. This is to draw it. <clears throat> In the movies, mm-hmm. not the book, mm-hmm. in the movies, how many times does Frodo wear the ring while on his journey to destroy it? I think that's the <sighs> hardest. That's tough. I think that's the oh, hardest question. That is quiz. a tough one. Don't even oh, think oh, I oh. can answer that. I don't think even Joey could get this one. That's a rough one. That's tough. That's You want to give him options? You ready, Tyler? I'm ready. Okay, the options are, does he put the ring on once? Twice, four times, or five in the entire trilogy? That's a tough question. On the way, yes. One, two, four, or five. And remember, you still have your golden ticket. You can ask either me or Dom to give you a clue. Since Dom, since you're reading that to me, <laughs> okay. what, I need a clue. Okay, I'll give you a clue. I know it's in the um, Prancing Pony, for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, hang on. If I give you this clue, will it completely... Oh, that's going to ruin it. Okay. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go Oh, you're just going to go with I'm it anyway. With it. Twice, you say, in the entire trilogy, he puts it on twice. You should have asked me for the clue. I've got a great clue. Wait, ask Billy. Ask Billy for a clue. <laughs> go on, Billy. So it's either one, two, four, or five, okay? All right, I'm going to go with four. four. Oh, he's, he doesn't want a clue. He doesn't want one. It's the correct answer, yes! Tyler. It's he's correct done it. <laughs> hey, it's a tie. It's a tiebreaker. It's a tiebreaker. <laughs> I'm on week one. We've got, we've got a tiebreaker question as I well. I can't believe it. And if whoever gets this right, Wins this chair, <laughs> right, producer? <laughs> we will right sign here. this chair. It's and yet send it that's to yet you. to be confirmed, but you might win a chair. <laughs> and I get so excited, I just broke wind on it. <laughs> which <laughs> it's worth more now. Can Billy, I do you... concede? <laughs> <laughs> Billy, do you want to do the time break question? No, you, you do, Dom. I'm too excited. So this is ca- it's almost like a two part follow on from what we just had so Mm -hmm. if it's for all do you guys want to just shout out the answer if you know it and whoever shouts it first wins i think well i think somebody presses a buzzer make that noise and then (laughs) you get to answer first and then the next person if you don't get it correct the next person does it okay copy that all right here we go so here's the here's they're both gonna buzz at the same time so here's (laughs) Here's your question, chaps, for all the marbles. How many times does Frodo wear the ring in the book? Is it four times, five times, six times, or 12 times? I'll guess. Oh, and that was a buzzer from Tyler there. Tyler. Four times, five times, six times, or 12 times? That's four, five, six, or 12. Let's go uh, six. Let's not see whether it's true or false. Joey, do you want to have a an answer? You could answer six as well if you want, or you could go somewhere else. What's the what's the what's the things again? Four no. times, yes. Five times, mm-hmm. six times, yep. or twelve times. <gasps> well, I'm gonna say since he said six, I'm gonna say you know there's probably a lot more you know context in the book. So mm-hmm. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just guess twelve because I'm not I'm not entirely sure. Guys, the correct answer is. Five. Five. I'm sorry, guys. Guys, you both win a chair. You both win nothing. Brilliant. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, I see two chairs. Guys, that was tremendous knowledge, if you don't mind me saying. That was absolutely wonderful. I quite like the fact that the first quiz ended in a very friendly draw. I think that's wonderful. If we think if we think of of anything to send you guys, we will send you something. Yeah, we'll try and raid the fridges around here and see what we can send. <laughs> Thank you be, for being our first guests. 
Thank hey, you for thanks us. for having us. Yeah, this Pleasure. is awesome. It's an honor to meet you guys. You guys are amazing. Thank it's you nice so to meet you guys yeah. too. See yeah. ya. Thank really you, Joey. Bye. Thank you, Taylor. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Honestly, Bills, how many of those questions would you have got right? Every single one. Billy. Yes, Dom. Circling back around, just very casually, to the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Yeah, yeah. Someone has sent us in a movie clip. We Ooh. don't know whereabouts it's from in the trilogy for us to watch and then maybe just break down what was happening for us in that time in our life. Exciting, Dom. Should we? We're going to watch it now. We don't know what it is. We're going to click this link. Oh, you're in charge of the clicker. I oh, like I that. We're going oh, to, we're going to here YouTube. we go. Right, let's and see here's thing. a clip. It's from the Fellowship of the Ring. Oh, there's a hint. And here it comes. Where are you taking us? Into the wild. How do we know this strider is a friend of Gandalf? I think a servant of the enemy would look fairer. Feel fouler. It's foul enough. We have no choice but to trust him. But where is he leading us? Rivendell, Master Gamji. To the house of Elrond. Did you hear that? Rivendell. We're going to see the elves. Gentlemen, we do not stop till nightfall. What about breakfast? We've already had it. We've had one, yes. What about second breakfast? Don't think he knows about second breakfast, Pip. What about elevensies? Luncheon, afternoon tea, dinner, supper. He knows about them, doesn't he? I wouldn't count on it. Well, I have to say, wow. we watched that in perfect silence. Well, yeah. Maybe we were just consumed by what was going on there on screen. Oh, yeah, maybe we should have said something as that was happening. Well, I don't know. Really. I We were talking about this the other day, you and I. I don't tend to watch my work outside of making sure what I've done is not embarrassing and that I can speak about the film simply because, and it happened just then, any time I watch anything that I do, yeah. I always think I could definitely do, have done that better. Mm. Isn't that always the way in art, though? I, yeah, it might be true. And it's I'm not being hypercritical and weirdly whatever. Sexy? Yeah, not being super sexy right now. <laughs> I just think, because I enjoy the process so much, I always think, oh, there's another way to have attacked that and another way and another yeah. way. And like you say, it might just be, the the element of art that you can always add colours yeah, to a painting. Yeah, I think so. I think Ted Hughes, the the poet laureate, he he would write a poem and then he said, "I just leave it and never go back to it and try and do a second draft or make it better because you just that's just that's the piece of art that was done. There you go, just leave it. Nice. And I, like I watched that and I loved you in that, Tom. Oh, thanks, Bills. I always love you in it, and I love Vigo in it, and I love Elijah and Sean and all those other people. For me, I just think I'm hypercritical. But to break down what we've just seen, I think that particular sequence was shot in different areas of New Zealand on different days, right? Definitely, because I have a very vivid memory of this the second part of it, the second breakfast part, in the snow because that was a really exciting, crazy day. Brilliant day. The first part of it, which I forgot about that part, I have no memory of filming that at all. I don't remember that either. I do remember days when it was yourself, Elijah, and Sean and I always feeling very frenetic and pacey and fast, because certainly with the four boys, the four hobbits, there was always something going on, right? We're always yeah. listening to music, having lunch together, mm -hmm. running around, playing games. I absolutely don't have any recollection of that first bit that we shot either. Although, interestingly, it would have been one of the first times that we did something with 
Vig. Yeah, you would, would think. think. If it's in order, I can't remember. Because the first thing we did with Vig was Weathertop. And yep. then I think we started getting into walking through the forest with Vig. Uh -huh. Was that particular part of New Zealand the place that was infested with sandflies? Because remember, we got lit up by sandflies. No, that was a different part. That was yeah. once we, we went to the marshes, wasn't it? That was fun. So on but, this on that on that day on the second breakfast day, because mm -hmm. you can obviously maybe talk a little bit more about second breakfast and where all that came from, but we had found ourselves in a massive flash snowstorm. Yeah, huge that the crew couldn't predict, and the only reason why I'm saying that is because most film crews will have a pretty accurate weather forecast of what's going to happen, yeah. and none of them really knew that snow was coming in until like an hour before it happened and then we were done. Yeah, and I think that we had planned uh, that scene to be, you know, a lot of close-ups and, you know, as we take the pans off to get ready to cook breakfast and all that. And then they were like, we've got an hour. We need to shoot this. And it was basically one wide shot. And then, you know, ideas were coming fast. What if you threw me an apple and it hit me in the head and blah, blah. And... I remember being at the time disappointed that, oh, this was such a, going to be such a nice scene and it feels like totally rushed now. And they were like, okay, we need to get the vans out. And they went first. And, and we were still filming as people were, you know, trying to get out of this snowstorm because yeah. they're like, we're going to get stuck on this mountain. Yeah, and we almost did. Our driver was sliding all over the road yep. in the snow trying to get us home. I like the fact that an apple came back into the scene because yeah. if you notice, with me at least, when you first see Merry at the start of Fellowship of the Ring, he's eating apples. Later on throughout the film, he's eating apples. And I think Vigo might have suggested to Pete, well, what if I throw them something, a yeah, loaf yeah. of bread or a banana or something? And Pete had said, apples, it has to be apples. Um, it did feel very rushed. From my side of things, I was just having a great day because suddenly the snow had come and there was a feeling with the film set of like, we're going to need to wrap in the next hour. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, wow, I thought I was going to be here till yeah. five in the afternoon. And suddenly we're wrapping in the next 45 minutes to an hour. Pete Jackson, from what I recall, was quite giddy with the energy of it all. Right, okay. Remember, he was like, we got to go, guys. Yeah, we got to yeah, go. Yeah, Come yeah. on, grab your stuff and let's go. And just kind of grabbing it on the fly. Um, but I, I think... It's in the books that hobbits in their normal daily life have breakfast, a second breakfast, right. elevenses, yeah. lunch, afternoon tea, dinner, and a supper. I think I might be missing one thing out, but so it just it's it's academic for us that we're like, well, of course we're stopping. Well, of course we're stopping this time. It's, it's second breakfast, yeah. and the, I love the humor of Aragon saying, "Well, no, you've had breakfast," and then you correct him. Well, yeah, well, but I'd want. do you know we're going to have five or six meals <laughs> in the not-too-distant future? And Strider probably has a meal every four days or something. The, the yeah. culture shock between how a human eats at that point and how the hobbits eat was was really sweet. I, I love the fact that, quite rightly, Vigo's character, even though he's guiding us through all this, he's very much removed from that hobbit world. He yeah. doesn't really understand the nuances of what it means to be a hobbit. No. Nah. We're a bit of a bother to him at this point. Yeah, totally. And and strangely enough, I don't know if you remember, but because it was difficult to get to get off of this set, when we got back, we weren't in our makeup trailers because they had to be taken off somewhere else. So we were in the small hotel that we were in, sitting on top of washing machines in the washer dryer room because it takes an hour to get all the hobbit feet off and the hobbit ears and the wigs. And if you remember, the makeup people were taking our shoes off in this washer-dryer room, and it was freezing cold. And Vigo turned up with a bottle of whiskey yeah. and gave us all a little dram of whiskey, a little drink that tried to warm us up in this snow. Yeah. And I thought, wow, look look at Strider looking after the Hobbits. Yeah, yeah, helping you know? <laughs> us out. And that also turned into a couple of other things, one of which was a kind of impromptu photo shoot. I think Vigo had That's a ha right. Hasselblad camera. That's right. And he shot a few images of you and myself and Elijah in the snow. And then after a couple more whiskeys, turned into a massive snowball fight. Do you remember? That's right. Crazy. 
What a what a strange and wonderful day. It sort of sums up the the filming of the movies actually. That sort of adapting to what's going on, but yeah. yet feeling like you're on an adventure. It was great. And as time has gone on, that second breakfast thing seems to have grown and got stronger and stronger. In fact, I sent Bill's an image the other day in a supermarket of a section of kind of fruits and vegetables, mushrooms and tomatoes yeah, and stuff. Yeah. And Mary and Pippin that had been drawn in the supermarket and you saying, well, what about second breakfast? So it's become this like reason for you to have an extra snack after breakfast, which I love. So if you guys have second breakfast, tell us about it. If that's something that you've actually brought into your daily practice. Yes, please. Please tell us about your second breakfast. Drop us a note. Well, Dom, I think we've reached about the end of our first ever podcast. Yes, but it's very important at this point to tell people to rate subscribe and review the podcast because it helps us do more podcasts, talk about more things, and you guys get a chance to hear us, you know, giggle on about rubbish. You're a very wise man. Oh, thanks, Bill. Anywhere you guys listen to podcasts, you can listen to this podcast. And also, we're going to be up on YouTube, right? Yeah, if you want to have a look at us, that's where you'll see us. At The Friendship Onion. The Friendship Onion. And next week, maybe we'll get into a little bit about that time that you and I were arrested and spent time in that Latvian prison. Yeah, we'll not get time for that just now, Tom. No, no time now. I'm going to get a Twinkie. See you next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.